Hi, this is Matt from Tradesman Digital Marketing. Today's video, I'm gonna walk you through columns. I'm gonna show you how to set them up at the campaign level, the ad group level, and the keyword level. And I'm gonna go over what metrics we recommend looking at when it comes to determining campaign success. So to start it off, we're gonna look at the actual metrics and columns in the campaign level. And there's one main metric I look at at the campaign level that you can't really see anywhere else, and that is search impression share loss due to budget. And as you can see, we already have them set up here. There's no data in the account, so because uh, this is just our demo account, uh, but this is how I would set it up, and this is why it's important. Uh, if you come down here to competitive metrics, you can see this is search impression share loss due to budget. And essentially what this means is, the amount of impression share directly lost due to budget, meaning your budget wasn't high enough for you to appear at that certain time. This is a really good indicator if you're not spending enough money in your account and maybe it might be worth upping the budget. If you have really bad performance, this could also be another indicator to look at to maybe give you an idea like, okay, we need to up the budget to get better results, sell better competition. Um, it's just a really good indicator of if there's anything wrong in the account. If this is really, really high, chances are you might have a problem. But this is the only way you can view it at the campaign level. And this is really the ones we look at uh, at a campaign level. I don't really look at anything else. You can look at the overall you know, success of it, looking at the conversions, um, the actual cost per conversion, stuff like that to give you a good idea of the actual campaign. But most of that stuff I like to do at the ad group level just to give me a better idea of where uh, you know good performance is coming from and bad performance is coming from. So on to the next thing, we're gonna hit apply here. And now this has been applied and you can see all of this is in here. Uh, the difference between, by the way, I should mention this because this is gonna be reoccurring. Uh, as you can see, search impression loss due to uh, budget, there's top, there's absolute top and then there's just impression share. So impression share, top, and then absolute top. Absolute top means the number one spot in all of Google Ads. How many times uh, were you there? Or how many times did you lose that spot for the very, very number one place inside Google Ads? Uh, if it just says top, it means you're in the top four spots. So what was your impression share for that? How much did you lose to a budget? And then the next thing is the actual just normal impression share. Were you on the first page? Did you show up for Google Ads anywhere? It could be at the bottom of the page, could be at the top of the page. Uh, that's just a nice little clarification there if you didn't know that. And that, that applies for ad rank, that applies for just normal impression share. It's all standard across the board. So the next thing is ad groups. When we come to ad groups, there's a lot of stats in here. There's clicks, impressions, click-through rate, average CPC, cost, conversions. Uh, these are all good, these are all standard, and they're very, very good indications of whether or not your account is performing. What I would do inside of here, I would look at performance. Um, all of this is good. I would put in impression share and absolute uh, impression share. These are really good indicators of whether or not the ads are showing high up and you're actually showing to customers. Uh, that's very important to know if you are actually able to be seen by customers because if you're not then chances are you have a problem with you know your ad copy maybe your keywords your landing page there's a problem there if your uh, impression share is too low generally so that's a good indication of uh, any errors in the account and again these are just these are metrics some of them can be really off and still be successful but chances are if you have something really radical uh, like if you had an impression share of five percent or something like that and it's not a super competitive metric uh, you're more than likely going to have something wrong with the account. Uh, but that being said, there's other metrics I would also look at. Uh, conversion rates, all conversions, you could add that. Most of these things apply to actually e-commerce. So if you're doing service-based businesses, I wouldn't worry too much about them, uh, especially most service-based businesses don't actually have the value associated with every single lead down. Uh, that just comes with generating leads through Google Ads. Uh, you can't really always apply a value to everything. Next thing is attribution. Attribution really only matters if you have multi, uh, a multi-stage funnel, so e-commerce, so say you had like a sign-up form, and then from that sign-up form, someone looks at your Google Ads, and then they go back to your website like a couple days later, and then they buy. This, this is essentially attribution, and Google's trying to figure out where to give uh, essentially points to and where to optimize for, to. So should we optimize for the, you know, the sign-up page? Should we optimize for, you know, the search lead click like there's a whole bunch of things this is normally used in e-commerce or really big funnels uh, i wouldn't worry about it too much if you're in service-based business uh, attributes this is kind of cool uh it can show you ad rotation it can show you bid strategy if you wanted to get more in depth say you had like a whole bunch of different uh, ad groups using different strategies and stuff like that um, 
I could see this being worthwhile, but for us, we generally use the same strategy throughout the campaign. Uh, shouldn't be too much of a difference when it comes to our service-based businesses. If you are using e-commerce and stuff like that, of course, uh, there are exceptions. When it comes to competitive metrics, I would definitely look at search impression share. So see what you're actually popping up for, search impression share top, search absolute impression share top. And then the next important thing would be search impression share lost due to rank. And this means essentially your ad quality was not good enough. Your ad rank wasn't good enough to actually appear, meaning you probably have an issue with your ad copy, possibly a budget, possibly your click-through rate, possibly the landing page. Somewhere in there, there's probably an issue and you should uh, look at it. Uh, these are very, very good indicators, especially if this is high. These are one of the metrics we really look at when determining whether or not an account is uh, healthy and doing well and trying to reach its full potential. Call details are great too. If you want to just, you know, segment the actual phone call, see how many you're getting versus like email leads, you could do that. Uh, it doesn't really matter too much. Generally, we do phone calls and email leads all together. Uh, if you did want to segment them, you can. Uh, message details are great. Uh, if you want to do like chats through Google Ads, you can. Uh, like lead forms, stuff like that. I don't really do them all that much just because most of the time people prefer phone calls. They don't really like text messages, um, even though they still can be valuable. So that's up to you. Uh, change history. This is cool if you have someone else managing the account and you just want to see when the last changes were or what types of changes they were. Uh, you can do that. You can add them to your actual column. Uh, normally, we don't add them just because we know the changes we made and generally we're pretty good at understanding all that. So that that's all of the actual columns. You can add custom columns if you want. You can add uh, custom uh, customizations to those ad columns and the attributes associated with them. Uh, but that is essentially all of the actual columns inside the ad groups and the ones we would look at. Uh, I would hit apply. And now you can see we have all of our columns set up properly. And this is a really good overview for how your ad groups are doing. So the next thing is the actual keyword level. And, the, and at the keyword level, I want to get as granular as possible because I want to see if there is anything wrong at all. I want to know it at the keyword level. I want to see how they're doing. I want to see how uh, the campaign is reacting, what the people are essentially seeing on the other side, what, they, what they're looking at, what they're clicking on, uh, if, the ad word, if the keyword is good, if... Um, it's getting a lot of impressions. If it's not getting a lot of impressions, I want to see all of this. I want to see everything. And this is generally the, our last step because at a campaign level, and I should say this, at a campaign level, you want just a broad overview. At an ad group level, you want a pretty in-depth overview to really segment a problem if you have it. So maybe one ad group isn't performing well, then you can go into that and you can be like, okay, now we can look at the actual keywords and see which ones aren't performing well. But at the keyword level, you need to have all the data. You can't be messing around with just a couple uh, columns. You, you really need everything. And that's why I recommend adding essentially everything you can. Um, all of this should be adding impression share, um, absolute and top. Both of those should be added. Clicks, cost, impression share, click-through rate. Uh, click-through rate is definitely very important. Uh, conversions, you can do conversion rate. I would add all conversions and just give you a good idea of what actual keywords are actually converting and how many you got from every single uh, keyword. That's very important. Attribution model is not very important for this. Campaign ID. I hate final URL. I don't like it because uh, we use essentially the same URL for our entire ad group, so it really doesn't matter. Uh, and it just takes up a real big space, so I would get rid of that. Estimated first position bid and estimated top of page bid. These are nice too. Uh, I like to look at because it just gives you a rough idea of like, okay, this is what we're paying per click and this is what Google is assuming we should be paying per click. And if they're relatively uh, similar, chances are they're good. But say they were like really far apart and we were seeing like uh, very low impression share, stuff like that, maybe it's due to our budget and we really need to up our budget to get into that first position and start getting clicks, start getting leads. So that's another good uh, thing to look at. Bid simulator, you could add bid simulator. This used to be more important when we had manual CPC, but generally if you're using a automated bidding strategy, you shouldn't really have to worry about this. Um, I would probably uncheck that. Competitive metrics, I would add essentially all of this search, exact match, and click share aren't all that important, but all of this stuff is very, very important. I would add them. Call details, messaging, quality score is probably our next most important thing here. Uh, call details and message details we already went over there uh, just more segmenting we don't need to worry about them right now uh, quality score i would add all of this 
So quality score is one of the key determining factors when it comes to how successful your campaign is going to be. Uh, I have an entire video on it if you want to look over that. But it's very, very important, and this entire column should be added so you know exactly what your quality score is at, if your ad is relevant, what the landing page is experienced like, and you want to make sure these are as high as possible because if you can get a high quality score, chances are you're going to get a lower cost per click. Lower cost per click leads to more leads in your account, leads to more success in your overall campaign. So very, very important. And landing page, ad relevance, expected click-through rate, all of these factors go into quality score. So if one of these are low and you have a low quality score, chances are you might have to fix something. So these are all very good indicators of uh, a potential problem, especially if one of those low, one of them is low. Um, the next is custom columns and add customizer attributes. We don't really need to do anything right with this. Uh, we're good when it comes to service-based business models. But if you were in e-commerce, you could add more stuff if you like. Um, other than that, if you've added all of this, this is a very, very good overview of the entire keyword. This is what we use when it comes to understanding how a keyword is performing and at the most granular detail possible because we want to see all the information possible that is relevant to us. And this is a very, very good setup. This is what I like to use and just go over everything. So we have essentially everything in here that would be necessary to diagnose whether or not a keyword is doing well and how the actual marketplace is re receiving it. So that's how to set up columns at the campaign, ad group, and keyword level. Like I said before, campaigns should be set up as a broad overview so you can understand if the campaign is performing well. Ad group should be a little bit more in depth so you can kind of identify problems. Like if you have a super high cost per conversion, that's a good indicator that, okay, maybe I got to look at the keywords inside of this. And then at the keyword level, it should be super in detail, showing literally anything that could be relevant to you that then you can make a decision on and whether or not you're going to you know expand this keyword uh, add a whole bunch of negatives remove the keyword whatever you're going to do with it uh, if you have any comments questions or concerns leave them down in the comment section down below i'd be happy to answer them other than that you guys have a wonderful day and take care